someone now who's got the muscle, his steady hand, could move a mountain, expert in bed. But come on now, there must be something missing. That golden one needs a double life, you find out. Tell me I don't know where Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out The World Where You Live by Crowded House, one of my all-time favourite bands. Something that, this is the kind of music that I grew up on. It's fantastic, awesome. Great, Neil Finn is just totally where songwriting's at. Anyway, uh, really, really interesting song. We're going to look at a simple version where we just play the chords real, real easy. Uh, there's a few kind of quirky timing things, particularly a 2-4 bar that goes before the chorus. That's a little bit weird. Uh, there's an interesting push in the chorus as well, a chord that comes a little bit earlier than you'd think that can throw people off a little bit. Uh, the bridge has got some really interesting chords and I'll show you the, the way of playing this little riff as well which uh, it's not how it's played on the original recording it's a I think a Rhodes electric piano on the original uh, or a Whirly something like that and uh, you know but it works it's kind of a nice thing to have on the guitar if you're going to play the song at a barbecue or whatever it kind of makes it sound like it's the song you know. So let's start as usual with just really simple four to the bar strumming. Uh, that first part the whole little riff is all just based around an E minor. La ba 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 da 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 ba 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 Okay, then we're into the verse, E minor. Here's someone now who's got the muscle D. Here's steady hand could move a mountain. E minor, expert in bed. But come on now, that D must be something missing. And the second bar of D back to E minor. That golden one leads a double D. You'll, you'll find out. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So that very last line, uh, we've got two bars on each chord. The last line, we've got two bars on the E minor. Then we've got one full bar of D and then just two strums on the D. Okay, it makes it feel a little bit weird. E minor, that golden E minor, two, three, two, double D, two, three, four, one, two, and then we're into the chorus. Okay, it's a little bit odd thinking of it like that now, but that's really the way that you're going to have to do it. The easiest thing to do really, I think, is to do the normal two bars of E minor and then count a six on the D. So, that golden one, three, two, double one. Two, three, four, five, six. Tell me I don't know where you go. Okay, and then we got four. This is we're now into the chorus. Starts on the D. D. I don't know where you A minor for two beats, G for two beats, and then to D for a bar. Do you climb into G for two beats, A for two beats, and then to D for a bar? To the world where you A minor for two beats, G for two beats, and then to D for a bar. The world where you G. Okay, the chorus again. So we're starting on a D. One, two, three, four. A minor for two, G to D. Do you climb into G, A, D? To the world where you A minor, G, D. To the world where you G, A, D. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, now let's get into a little bit of the strumming of this part because it can get a little bit mucky. Um, for the verses, there are lots of different approaches that you could go for. I think just kind of what I call old faithful, just down, down, up, up, down works really well for this thing, you know. Here's someone now who's got the muscle, here's steady hand, could move a mountain. You know, that, that sort of strumming pattern works really well. You could do more complicated stuff if you want, but the, this kind of song, you know, the melodies are so strong, it doesn't really need too much fancy stuff going on in the guitar part. But if you wanted to try, you know... Here's someone now, got a pencil, here's steady hand, 
you know, you could really mix it up however you like. But uh, my recommendation would be keep the strumming simple, something like Old Faithful, but just some sort of simple pattern and keep it fairly repetitive so it doesn't freak the listener out. So once you feel confident with the strumming in the verses, it's time to tackle this bit of rhythm that goes between the verse and the chorus. It's, it's not actually difficult, it's just a bit weird, which for most people makes it kind of difficult, you know, they think too much about it. Uh, when I learned it, I always remember it feeling a bit weird, but not never actually understood what was happening. It wasn't until I started writing this book that I had to figure out exactly what bars were going where and how it was working. I just learned it by listening and trying to play along a lot, you know, which you can do, and it's kind of, in a lot of ways, it's the most recommended version, because sometimes trying to explain this stuff gets a little bit a uh, little bit weird a bit tricky and, and complicated to explain and therefore difficult for you to understand as well um, so what I'm going to recommend that you do is on the D chord the very last part of the verse the very last two beats of the verse you add in two down strums okay so you have the E minor that golden one leads another down down up up down now here down down in the chorus down up up down Okay, just to get you through into the chorus progression. Okay, I'm going to talk you through that one more time. It's not exactly right. There's another little twist that we've got to add in to make it more difficult. But I want you to get uh, through this part first. So E minor, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down to D, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, down. And then we're into the verses. Okay. Now, sorry, now we're into the chorus is what I meant to say there. So the chorus strumming, when, because there's two chords in some of the bars, we need to change the strumming up because the down, uh, down, down, up, up, down, old faithful pattern doesn't work anymore. So where we've got two chords in the bar, we're going to go, uh, for example, the first one's A minor, G, D. We're just going to go down, 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 up, down, 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 up, up, down again, down, down. Up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, down, down. Okay, so you're just keeping it really, really simple again. So in the chorus, you get the very first bar, you're going to stick with your down, down, up, up, down if you want. Uh, uh, that's after the two, four bar. And then you're going to go into this alternating pattern of going down, 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 up, down, then to Old Faithful, down, down, up, up, down. So down, 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 up, down, 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 up, up, down. That's the strumming pattern for the chorus. Let me take it from the last line of the verse and through the chorus so you can see how all of this fits together because it is a little bit odd, right? So E minor. That golden one leads a double D. You'll find beyond one, two, down. I don't know where you go. Okay, now, first thing you want to do is practice that up and get really confident with playing through that the way that I've just explained it. Now, the little twist, and the little kind of, just when you thought you were there, you know, you've climbed this really difficult mountain, you think you're at the top, and then there's another crest just behind it, is that the A minor chord, the very first one, is pushed forward, so it's actually played on the up strum before the bar starts. It's a, it's a terror. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't explain it any other way. It, it was the thing that used to throw me out when I was learning at it, and, and I've had to have a few goes at doing this lesson just to explain that one little bit because it's, it just makes everything sound so complicated. It's not complicated, but it's difficult to explain and therefore difficult for you to learn. That's why the listening option is such a good one. Um, so let me just play it, the, the transition from the verse to the chorus, okay? So E minor, and then to D two strums down down up up down up down down up down down okay, it's not difficult it's just the a minor instead of coming right on the down strum comes on the up again so let me do that one more time so down down up up down 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 up up down to the d down down up up down the two five one two and three and four and one two three and One more time with that count. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, one, two, and three, and four. And one, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Etc. 
through the chorus. Now, I really hope your brain hasn't exploded because it's one of those funny little quirks that you get in songs sometimes where there's just one little bit that's just a bit weird and some some of you guys are going to pick it up straight away listen to the record a couple of times and go, oh yeah i can do that and other people really struggle with it it's you know a lot of it's about figuring out the count you know if you struggle with it and you can't pick it up by ear it's it's making sure that you understand what's going on i think that can be really helpful um i've got it written out in the songbook correctly but uh what i might do as well is add a little rhythm thing uh on my website as well for those of you that are really struggling i'll write that out um just that one little section to make sure that you got it because that's the you know that's the tricky bit so uh, the rest of the song, let's go through some other little bits. Now, the going into the bridge also has an interesting uh, little chord change going on in it. Um, and so the, uh, the end of the chorus, originally, you would have heard where we just went, well, we live in We got the little riff. The second chorus, it does the thing, it goes back to D, the world where you live. We've got this little E minor, D with an F sharp, G, and then we're going actually to an A chord. E minor, D with an F sharp bass. Now, I tend to play a regular D and use my thumb to play the F sharp bass. I know for many of you that's really difficult. You can also fret it using fingers one, two, three, and four. So fingers two, three, and four, making up your regular D chord, and first finger there. Some people play it like this. This is a good option. It's the way I played it a long time, is using second finger on the thicker string, which will mute the fifth string as well, open D string, third finger on the second fret of the third string, little finger on the third fret of the second string, and just muting the thinner string there, you know, that, that works as well. Uh, it's not my preferred option, but you can do that if you want. And it just happens this one, this one little bar uh, is just this E minor, D with an F sharp bass, and if you really struggle, you could just play D, of course, and then to G, making sure that you get the rhythm is one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Down, up, down. One, and two, and three, four. And one, two, and three, four. Okay? It's just the little lead in at the end of the chorus into the bridge. We've got this friend, come round, you might. This has got a few interesting chords in it. Uh, the first one's A, pretty simple. Now the second one is kind of a D chord with an A bass. Now you could play regular D if you're struggling with this, uh, these additional chords, but I think it's worth having a look just to kind of extend things out a bit. But like I said, if you're a beginner, just stick with the you know, regular D chord. Um, and this one is nothing on the thicker string, open A, third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string, first finger, second fret of the third string, second finger second fret of uh, sorry third fret of the second string and an open e string zero four two three open okay very interesting chord now the next chord's an e minor with an a bass still um now this one i'm using third finger in the fifth fret of the fourth string uh, Second, I can't remember the, my finger numbers. Second finger in the fourth fret of the third string, a little finger underneath the fifth fret of the second string, open E string as well, open thinner string, and open A string. Again, not playing the thicker string, okay? So we end up with A, to this D with an A bass, to E minor with an A bass, and then F major seven. Sometimes I think it sounds like a regular F, but F major seven sounds better to my ears. Um, you might know F major seven as just being third finger on the uh, third fret of the fourth string. It must be getting late for me today. Uh, second finger in the second fret of the third string, first finger, first fret, second string, and open E. I also like playing this with the third finger moved over to the fifth string and little finger underneath. It's the way I like it. It's putting a C on the bass note, and I think that sounds really cool in this song. So that'll be nothing on the thicker string or F if you want to reach over and grab it with your thumb. 3rd fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 1st fret, open. Okay, so A to D to E minor with an A bass to F major 7 with a C bass behind the A D is E minor to F chord for 3 bars. 
la da da a minor to G to D. This is the solo section A minor G to D. It repeats around a few times and then we're back into other sections of the song, which we've covered already. Um, the bridge part is very, very choppy on the original. <laughs> So, so much fun playing these songs. There's so many different layers that you can pick up on for, out of the original recording to play on acoustic guitar. Slight diversion again, but go and check out some versions of Neil Finn playing the big crowded house songs, but just on acoustic guitar, because the way he kind of condenses the whole band into just the acoustic part is a really good, good thing to be listening to so you can hear out for these different ideas. It's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about there, you know, making sure you listen to the, the drums are really right on the beat at that point. So it makes sense with this drumming. So what I'm doing there is just strum and then muting with the outside part of my hand. I'm also relaxing the chord shape. So after I've played the chord, I'm relaxing the shape. In that particular case, it's not good because the, the open strings there, but the chord kind of stops a little bit. So that helps add to that kind of the feeling of the, the four. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention on this song is just that, that kind of keyboard riff. Of... Yeah, it's, it's really it's a keyboard line. Uh, but strumming an E minor uh, with the E minor chord down. Third finger slides forward two frets to the fourth fret of the fourth string. Open D, second fret, all on the D string, the fourth string. And then playing that fifth string second fret. With It's like just holding the E minor. It's really nice way. Strum, third finger forward two frets, open, putting the E minor back down, playing the fourth string, and then the fifth string. Then open A string, open fifth string, put second finger back down the second fret of the uh, fifth string, and then the open D. And we're going back to the second finger in the second fret of the fifth string. It's just a nice way of kind of bringing a bit of that riff in. Again, if you're playing at a, at a barbecue or whatever, if you play that riff, any Crowdies fans is going to recognise it straight away and, and uh, you know, get them primed, ready to sing along. It's a great, great song, that one. This one, a little bit high for me to sing it in the proper key. Might be for you too. If it is high for you, one thing I was just experimenting before the lesson was using a capo and uh, definitely for me, like around the fifth fret, kind of sound makes it kind of possible to sing it because uh, it's quite high otherwise and you might find the same thing I just I wanted to do the lesson in the in the right key for those of you that with a better vocal range than me that can sing it properly um, so it's a pretty big lesson this one I hope you've enjoyed it it's made sense I haven't bummed you out with too much uh, complicated stuff unnecessarily I'll see you for plenty more songs and lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye